The Cleveland Cavaliers had an extremely impressive season. They finished the year with a 51 and 31 record, which ranked them fourth in the Eastern Conference. Things did not go so well for them in the postseason, though. They were bounced out of the first round by the New York Knicks in just five games. And while no one thought they would make an NBA Finals, many thought they would be a very competitive playoff team. But instead, they fell apart in just about every way possible. For starters, they were 15th in the playoffs in points scored per game, 10th in field goal percentage, 14th in three-pointers made, and and on defense, where they should have been elite, it was the exact opposite. They were 12th in blocks and 8th in points allowed in the paint. And given that there were only 15 teams in the playoffs, they ranked poorly in just about every aspect. And losing to the Knicks in the fashion that they did was disappointing, to say the least. And I'm not saying the Knicks are a bad team or anything, but on paper, the Cavs and the Knicks match up really well. And I think most assumed it would be a 7-game series with a ton of back-and-forth action from the two teams' elite scorers. But Donovan Mitchell had other plans. He played way below his all-star standards. He went from averaging 28 points in the regular season to just 23 points in the playoffs. And it gets worse. He shot an elite 39% from three in the regular season and an incredibly poor 28% in the playoffs. His field goal percentage and free throw percentages were underwhelming and not to mention he averaged almost four turnovers per game. Cavs fans were upset for sure. That was at least until they heard Mitchell's uplifting message after the series. You can't let one series define you as a group or as a player. I think we have a special group that can do a lot of different things and continue to grow. I had a playoff series against Houston. I shot something like 30% from the field, 20% from three. The last game, the elimination in game five, I shot four for 22 from the field. That forever changed me as a player. That moment was always in my head, that series. And I haven't missed an all-star game since that. It just changed my trajectory in a positive way. Despite his positive outlook on things and willingness to get better after defeat is why you shouldn't be worried if you're a Cavs fan. Also, don't forget, he is just 26 years old and at the very beginning of his prime. We've got to be honest about the Cavs' future, though, especially next season. Because while they were amazing in the regular season, they showed that they just weren't ready for the bright lights. And not only that, but their roster wasn't as perfectly constructed as they probably thought. Two big problems became clear in the Knicks series. They had no bench, and they couldn't get rebounds on either end of the court. Their head coach, J.B. Bickerstaff, even called it out. I mean, obviously our bench has to give us a spark. We gotta find a way to manufacture some buckets. You know, how do we create for one another? And how does our bench support our starting cast? We'll go back and we'll take a look at it, you know? But at some point in time, you just gotta find a way to just put the ball in the basket. And I thought, I mean, that unit kind of struggled there. I thought Jetty Osman was really good. He gave us a good burst and then, you know, at the end of the day, you can't give up 17 offensive rebounds. If they had had some good scoring off the bench and a couple of veteran rebounding bigs, this series could have gone in their favor. And of course, Mitchell would have had to be more efficient. So that now brings us to some free agent signings that I think would possibly make them title contenders for the first time since the LeBron James era. The first move would be to sign Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson is coming off the best season of his career. He averaged 20 points, four rebounds, and four assists while shooting 44% from the field, 81% from the free throw line, and 33% from three on seven and a half attempts per game. There honestly probably isn't a better bench scoring option than him. He could definitely fill up the scoreboard when either Mitchell or Darius Garland aren't shooting that well. He's one of the smoothest natural scorers we have in the game today, and he's had a few monster games this season, including that one game versus the Pelicans where he scored 39 points while making seven threes. Clarkson, along with Lowry Markkinen, are the two reasons the Jazz's plan to tank failed. Lowry was an all-star, and Clarkson was extremely close to becoming one. The veteran is 31 years old and ready to contribute to a team with championship aspirations. And sure, he isn't the greatest defender, but he can easily be hidden behind all of the great defenders the Cavs already have on the roster. The next move? Sign Alec Burks. He's another underrated bench scorer who scores 13 points while shooting 43% from the field, 81% from the free throw line, and 41% from three on almost five attempts per game. Burks, along with Clarkson, would boost their bench production by a large margin. And they both have the ability to run pick and rolls and facilitate at a serviceable level. Burks has operated as the Knicks point guard at certain times a couple of seasons ago, so he can be pretty versatile offensively. And like Clarkson, he isn't the best defender, but he is still an average defender who gets things done for the most part. And the last signing they should pull the trigger on is Mason Plumley for rebounding purposes. He averaged nine rebounds in 26 minutes last season. And it's important to note that the Cavs weren't just a bad rebounding team in the playoffs. They were just as bad during the regular season as well. They ranked 25th in rebounds per game. And I might be starting to sound like a broken record on this channel, but I can't stress enough how important rebounding is in the playoffs. Being able to rebound the ball effectively gives your team more possessions offensively. It's as simple as that. And defensive rebounds allow you to consistently get out and 
and transition. So Plumlee would definitely be a great pickup for that reason. Not to mention, he's a good passer and a high IQ player in general. So Jordan Clarkson, Alec Burks, and Mason Plumlee would give the Cavs the best chance to get back to the finals. But if the Golden State Warriors decide not to bring back Draymond Green, he could be a perfect fit as well. And I know it would be weird to see him in a Cavs uniform for obvious reasons. And it might be a weird fit to place him next to Evan Mobley and Jarrett Allen, but it's just something to think about. But now, let's briefly go over the current Cavs roster and talk about how they align with the potential free agent signings that could elevate their games next season. We've already kind of gone over Donovan Mitchell, so now let's move on to Darius Garland. He averaged 21, 2, and 7 while shooting 41% from 3 on 6 attempts. The 23-year-old is easily a top 10 point guard in the NBA. He's got one of the best dribbling packages in the league, and his ability to change pace going from fast to slow is next level. And he's maybe even top 5 when it comes to being shifty. He can get to the rim and finish at a high level, and he's also an excellent spot-up shooter who just happens to be a really good passer as well. And you know, he actually played well in the Knicks series. He averaged 20 points and 5 assists while shooting 44% from the field and 38% from 3. He's an underrated defender as well. He's tough, physical, and smart, and he'll be even better next season. Evan Mobley had some struggles offensively this postseason, but the potential is there. I'm sure offense is his number one priority this offseason, because on defense, he's a monster. He's an elite shot blocker and one of the most versatile defenders in the league. He was even in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation, and there are some out there who believe he should have won it. As he continues to grow on both sides of the ball, the Cavs' future will get even brighter. And the fact that he's such a beast defensively at just 21 years old is insane. That means he's going to get better. He's basically Anthony Davis all over again. Just imagine what he'll be by the time he's 25 years old. That is a scary thought. But he couldn't anchor the best defense in the NBA all by himself. Jared Allen did amazing as the Cavs' second best rim protector. They were the reason the Cavs were the best paint defensive team this past season. Those two in the paint together are almost like a cheat code. And while Allen isn't 21 years old like Mobley, he's still a very young 25 years old. Isaac Okoro didn't really do much offensively versus New York, and that's kind of the thing. The Cavs simply had too many offensive liabilities on the court. But signing Jordan Clarkson and Alec Burks and possibly another solid scorer off the bench could make a world of difference. Okoro isn't a lost cause, though. The 22-year-old is a tenacious defender who was one of the most underrated defensive stoppers. While Allen and Mobley controlled the paint, he was out on the perimeter, hounding the opposing team's best players. But he definitely needs a solid jumper if he wants to stay in the rotation. As for Karis LeVert, his future in Cleveland is a little uncertain. And even though we just raved about Jarrett Allen, he might be in the same boat. LeVert is a free agent, and many teams will be trying to sign the 28-year-old streaky scorer. And as for Jarrett Allen, there are rumors going around that the Cavs could trade him for more depth. One trade partner includes the Dallas Mavericks. And while I do understand trading him, because while he is a great defender, the Cavs already have a 21-year-old Defensive Player of the Year candidate in Evan Mobley, so trading Allen for depth could be a blessing in disguise. But honestly, if I were the Cavs, I would keep him and just sign the few guys that we mentioned earlier. But what do you think? What should the Cavs do this offseason to assure that they get to the NBA Finals next season? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.